In 1956, Hanbury Brown stunned the scientific community when he reported that photons emitted by Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, had a tendency to arrive together in clumps on his detectors. That is to say, unlike cars on the highway or people passing by or any other randomly distributed classical objects whose time of arrival would be recorded like this, Hanbury Brown and his mathematician colleague Twiss found out that photons from a thermal source are detected like this. Actually, more like London buses. There is a way to have photons arrive like cars or people. One can use a laser instead of a chaotic source. A third type of emission comes from single photon emitters, like a quantum dot, that produce photons which avoid each other. Glauber proposed a quantity called G2, defined as shown here, to describe these situations. G2 is equal to 1 for uncorrelated events. It is greater than 1 for so-called bunching events where photons are cluttered. It is smaller than 1, ideally 0, for so-called anti-bunching events when photons avoid each other. For instance, one can compute G2 from the light emitted by a quantum dot in a microcavity, which has the following spectral line shape. One would find a value close to 0 as the emission is anti-bunched. This is when detecting all photons from the system. But what if we select only those in this frequency window? Is the G2 the same as when detecting at all frequencies? One can also correlate photons from two frequency windows. Experimentally, this is an easy thing to accomplish. One merely interposes a filter before counting photons. Theoretically, however, such questions are extremely difficult to resolve. Despite the best efforts of theorists since the late 1970s, only the force of heavy algebra and various approximations will yield results, and then only for particular cases of simple systems. In physical review letters, we have recently presented a way around this obstacle and show how to readily compute Gn of frequency filtered photons with no restriction whatsoever on the number of photons or on the type of system. In the new journal of physics, we apply this formalism to a wide class of fundamental quantum emitters for the case of two photon coincidences. In this short movie, we will show some of the results for the case already discussed of a two-level emitter in a cavity. This is the spectral shape again, and we are going to present correlations of photons at all frequencies. This is the result. We call this a two-photon spectrum. In blue are the anti-bunching correlations. In white, photons are uncorrelated. In red, they are bunched. Let us now bring our system into strong coupling by making the cavity of better quality. This results in a so-called Rabi doublet. We see that in the two-photon spectrum, new patterns appear. When the photon lifetime is very long, an incredibly rich landscape of correlations emerges. To give a qualitative idea of the most important features, let us bring in the level structure of the system, the so-called James Cummings ladder. Horizontal and vertical patterns are accounted for by successive emissions between the states. This cascade is bunched. This sequence, on the other hand, or this one, are anti-bunched, as the system has to change its internal state to shift levels in this way. More perplexing are these features, and also these. Let us consider the anti-diagonals. They correspond to direct two-photon emission. This relaxes energy conservation, since only the sum of the energies is fixed. As the intermediate level is skipped over, we call this type of two-photon emission a leapfrog process. <laughs> two-photon emission is difficult to observe in general, we show how to reveal it and make it obvious. There are countless configurations to revisit with this novel technique. For instance, this shows how the correlations remap when the quantum dot is detuned from the cavity. And this shows what happens when increasing the pumping rate. We illustrate our last example with an important remark. While a perfect detector resolution can be assumed for single photon spectra, the filter's line width is an integral part of frequency resolved photon counting. Two narrow filters give trivial results, while broad ones blur the features as shown here. And, of course, in the limit of very broad filters, the conventional result of Hanbury Brown and Twiss is recovered. The study of all the other frequency ranges is just at its beginning.